Hello, this is the second um, video um, in our series on these chapters uh, 10 through 15, the analysis of variance, the cross tabulation, the correlation that we're describing as um, statistics for, uh, as explanatory statistics. Again, where um, we're looking at how the Y responds to the um, independent variables uh, X. Um, here, uh, this one is on analysis of variance, where, whereas before the cross tabulation, both y and x are specified as, cro as uh, categorical, either nominal or ordinal, and we talked about that. Here with the analysis of variance, the y is a continuous variable, and the x is a categorical variable. So that, for example, um, it, going back to the income education one, uh, or the income one, let's say, we were talking about earlier, uh, the other video, if we have income as our continuous variable then, and we had gender as our categorical variable, then analysis of variance would tell us what the average uh, income is for males and the average income is for females and give us a statistical test of significance in the difference between the two. If, uh, in that case, it's the F statistic, which we'll talk about here in a second, and the F statistic, if the F obtained, in that case we we're just talking about, is larger than the F critical, then we reject the null that uh, gender does not sp explain any variation in income. If we get uh, an F, in other words, an F obtained larger than F critical, then we can say most likely that gender does explain some of the variation in, um, in um, income. So here, as we are looking at analysis of chapter 10. Let's take a look. The null hypothesis, well before we get to the null and the research hypothesis, let's take a look at uh, something that I think is special about the analysis of variance um, that's particularly special for sociology. One of the things that sociology, maybe the thing that sociology is particularly good at is uh, from a sociological perspective is the contextual influences on behavior. Um, so that when um, you know we're looking at like in the era area of community health where I work, we're looking at uh, if we look at health variations across the community of San Antonio by neighborhood, uh, and we see differences in uh, those a measure of that health by neighborhood, and we use an analysis of variance to see if that difference is statistically significant, then um, that lends us to. Uh, thinking about um, programs, working with the na neighborhoods that would be, say, at a health disadvantage, developing programs that would improve their um, neighborhood in a way that would improve their health. Perhaps uh, lighting in the streets so they could take walks, better sidewalks, maybe parks, whatever that might be. So a, sp a special sociological significance of ANOVA, analysis of variance, is that it measures differences between groups. And sociology is a lot about groups. Uh, so that one way, and you'll see this if you go to chapter 10, we're just highlighting some uh, key points of chapter 10. The total variation in Y can be uh, parsed into or broken down into that variation between groups and that variation within groups. So uh, we know that just because there are differences between groups doesn't mean that there's not variation within a group. One neighborhood might be high on one measure, may, might be high on the measure of health and another neighborhood low on a measure of health, but that doesn't mean everybody in that neighborhood on either side is exactly the same. There may be some in one neighborhood that are more like those in the other neighborhood. We're talking about averages here, the average uh, between the two. So it is, uh, uh, I think, a very, draw your attention to that. It's a special sociological significance, the analysis of variance. The way we talk about it out in the community health, we talk about spatial anivus because we look at the variation of a continuously uh, a specified health measure in a continuous variable, how it distributes across a geographical, categorical, shall we say, neighborhoods, and look at the differences. So uh, it lends itself some very, very powerful analysis in sociology. And it's carried over in the F statistic. Uh, you can go to the text and see what the mathematics of that is. We're not going to worry about it at this point. Because uh, we're, we're not doing calculations at this point. We're interpreting uh, SPSS uh, printouts. Get a feel for SPSS towards the end of the semester. The F statistic is b the between variance uh, divided by the within variance. 
So if it's the case where there is more variation between the groups, then uh, the F statistic will be uh, greater than one. And that, from a sociology standpoint, I guess we'd say that's, that's good if we're one, in the one we just talked about, it's like a diagnostic, a population health diagnostic. If one neighborhood is higher, not so good, on a particular health issue, um, then, and we see the difference, and that's good because then that allows us to target that neighborhood that's high. Um, but we get the, uh, the other part of this good is, is that we get a good measure of the difference between neighborhoods or between groups, however we'd, uh, we say it. So the F statistic, very powerful. Again, F obtained, F critical. We have degrees of freedom, and we'll walk through that. Degrees of freedom for the between is categories. Don't ask me why they put C for a category. It's probably an old German term, right? But, excuse me, the number of categories minus one. So if you've got three categories, uh, you know, then you would subtract and you'd have two degrees of freedom. You've got degrees of freedom, you know, you've got 500 uh, in your in and you've got three categories, then you'd have whatever that is minus three. And we'll walk our way through that when we do the homework, which let's do one of, uh, not homework, but the demonstration. Let's look at um, this first one, demonstration analysis of variance. Here again, just like we were saying before, um, anything to the left of the by, what's left of the by, to the left of the by is your dependent variable. What is to the right of the by is your x variable or your independent variable. So then you can just bring those down and put them in their appropriate place. We've got a null hypothesis. This is hypothesis testing and a research hypothesis. The null hypothesis would say that the averages or the moves, we're talking about population estimates at this point. We're trying to estimate inferentially what we see out in the population. Uh, but here you say that the mean of one group is the same as the next group is the same of group three and the same of any of the groups in the analysis. Um, and that would be like more or less equal. They don't have to be precisely equal, but the difference would be only trivial. Like and we've talked about trivial before. Research would be one or more of the moves, uh, moves with an S, is not equal to the others. In other words, one of these is not equal to the others, or maybe more than one. And, um, and then we do the F statistic to demonstrate whether that is the case. All right, so as we come down here, we see the degrees of freedom between K1, N minus K. So let's go over to the table, and we see that we've got three categories, uh, non-Hispanic, white, African-American, and Hispanic. The question here is, is there variation uh, watching TV, which is our continuous variable measured in hours, I guess, by respondents, race, and ethnicity, a categorical nominal variable. So we take a look at this, and you can see that here we get the number of whites, the number of African-American, non-Hispanic whites, number of African-Americans, number of Hispanics, and we get the average. 2.67, 4.34, 2.99. Well, it's probably pretty clear to the eye that 4.34 for African Americans is much higher than the other two. So we could probably conclude, but we want statistics. Statistics is the evidence in, in the studies that you do. Um, it's not just what you say, but it is the mathematical evidence that supports, uh, perhaps we could even say validates what you say. So um, even though we could say that we see it, uh, we'd want to do the uh, statistical analysis. As we come around, we notice that the F statistic is 65. So we've got an F obtained of 65. Pretty good size, right? So let's go for the F critical. Degrees of freedom, K minus 1, three categories, that'd be 2. And um, our total sample size, if you look at here, is 1,881. And so we do n minus 2 would make that what? 1,879, something like that. So let's go to Appendix D for uh, the F critical. And um, on the um, left-hand side, you will see the, uh, the amount the, for the degrees of freedom uh, within, which is your n minus k, which in this place we're looking for like 1,800. You go all the way down and you can see that it only goes to 120. So we're like in that infinity. So we're on the bottom row with this n minus k. And um, the degrees of freedom are two because we've got three categories minus one. So we go over, you'll notice across the top, one and two, four, five, 24. Uh, go down the two column until we get to 2.99. That 2.99 that you see in the bottom row next to the infinity symbol for uh, degrees of freedom within, that's 2.99 is our critical value. 
So you would put here what the critical value is, 2.99 F statistic, and then you'd make your decision. And that would be that the F statistic observed is much larger than the F statistic critical. Therefore, I reject the null that there is no difference between these three, and in fact, there is indeed a difference. And then you can describe something that you see. It appears that the uh, African Americans um, watching TV is much higher than um, the other groups. Now, you notice we've got a confidence interval here, so you have to address that. The confidence interval, this is a sample. If we were to do 100 samples of the same size, uh, if we looked at, for example, um, the overall mean, let's say, on, on right here. Um, whoa, looks like what I'm doing. Let me see, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Got, pulled the wrong one. Um, we can see here that the overall mean is 2.95. If we were to do 100 samples of the same size, we would come up with um, 95 out of 100 would be 2.85 low mean on the, on the mean on the low side and 306 on the right side. Be sure to address the confidence interval. Re, re, bring back into your thoughts uh, the value of the confidence interval. What we've got here are point estimates, and you've got to enclose them in the confidence interval and describe what that confidence interval means. Be sure and do that. All right, so that is how you would do. Um, that's the demonstration for the ANOVA watching TV by respondents, race, and ethnicity. All right, let's look at the other one. Um, here we've got respondent socioeconomic index by respondents, race, and ethnicity again. So we've got the SES, we could say, is our independent, our dependent variable. And again, we've got uh, independent variable is race and ethnicity, it's categorical. We know what the null would be, you can state it now. You know what the research would be, hypothesis. We've got our same alpha we use often now. Consensually, the consensus in statistics, social sciences, statistics is used in alpha of 05, 95% probabilities. You can see how to do the degrees of freedom. And again, it's K minus 1, so it'd only be 2, 3 categories minus 1. The N in this case is 4,051. So we subtract 2 from 4,051, and we get 4,049 or something like that. So we go back to the column of Appendix D, where basically we're at the same uh, critical value. Uh, the degrees of freedom within go drop off the bottom of the page. And then we go to one degree of freedom, two degrees of freedom rather, and we get 2.99. So here we would say the, uh, the degree of freedom, uh, or the critical value is 2.99, and then here we'd make our decision. Our, our F statistic observed is much larger, whatever it is, I forget. Um, it is um, 81, very much larger than 2.99, so we would reject the the null and say that there is a statistically significant difference in the means uh, in terms of these three categories of race and ethnicity and watching TV. And then you could say something about the African Americans seem to have, um, well, let's see what it says here. We've got a different, uh, different reading here. I'm sorry, I'm re getting ahead of myself or behind myself, I guess. When we look at the means here for the socioeconomic index, uh, Hispanic whites are 51, African Americans are 44, Hispanics are 40. So there we would say, that there is a statistical significant difference between these means on the SEI, and um, and then we could then say something in our text about it appears as though the non-Hispanic white has a higher SES than either of the other two, and perhaps the greatest difference is the one between whites, non-Hispanic whites, and Hispanic whites. So that's the way that you would do your homework for analysis of variance, um, and I hope uh, hope the video is helpful. In a few minutes I'm going to do uh, number three which will be correlation and uh, which is a portion of uh, chapter five, or 15 rather.